Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it. It's being written in our heart and mind. Thank you for the revelation that you're bringing forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. We're continuing to share with you on the subject of end time events and things that are important to prepare you for the coming days. In these last days, we know that there's going to be the remnant, the one, the few, the ones that are going to be raised up, that are going to go on to perfection, that are going to walk his way, do his mighty works, see the mighty work accomplished in those who are obedient to him. We look at a few of the scriptures we looked at before as we're talking about how we conquer fear in the last days. In Haggai, chapter 2, verse 1, in the seventh month, and that immediately should get your attention, is that is prophetic of the end time work being done in the end time church because that speaks of the seventh month when the feasts of the Lord, the three final feasts, are fulfilled by Jesus at, after the end of the church age to bring forth the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. So in the one and twentieth day of the month, which is at the last day of tabernacles, so this means the end time work being the last t t time when it's been accomplished, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Agai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel the son of Jeteel, the governor of Judah, and Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the residue of the people, saying, Who's left among you and saw this house in her first glory? This is referring to the early church that had the glory of God manifested because they were walking in the ways of the word. And how do you see it now? And it's not, not like it was. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it is nothing? That's right. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, the sons of Joseph, the high priest. Every one of us are to get strong. You're to be strong, O ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and be doing. It's the word asaw, meaning to be doing. Not work, but actually to be doing. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. He is going to accomplish a great work, and those who get strong and are doing the word of God, those are the ones he's going to be with. And this is according to what? According to the word of the covenant. Here he speaks about the word that I covenanted with you and you came out of Egypt. That's all a type for the New Testament era of the word that now that he's covenanted with us as we have come out of Egypt, which is a type of the world when we got born again and come into the new covenant. So my spirit remains among you, fear ye not. The reason he says fear not is because of the things that are going to be happening at this time as we see. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, for once it's a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. This is the tremendous shaking that is going to come as Jesus is pouring out the judgments and taking back the authority over the earth before he brings forth the millennial reign into manifestation. He's going to shake all nations. The desire of all nations shall come, which is Jesus coming to every nation to see if they're going to turn to him or not. And I'll fill this house with glory, the end time church. This is at the very end of the church age, for those who have met the conditions and passed the test of the judgment that's going to come upon the church, which will only be the ones who are walking continually in righteousness. Silver is mine, gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter house, which is the end time church, shall be greater than of the former. It was tremendous in the early church, but it's going to be greater on the end time church as we meet the conditions and see the work of God be accomplished God's glory will be poured out on this end time church saith the Lord of hosts in this place for where this church has come to will I give peace this is the word shalom meaning completeness meaning the total complete work will be accomplished in those who follow the way of the Lord we also saw as we see the fear that is going to be occurring as the judgments are poured out in Psalms 46. We see it in verse, as we come to, uh, this, after this, the first verse says, God's our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, in trouble. Therefore will we not fear. Now, why is that? Because of the things that are happening. Because we understand they're going to happen. Therefore, we won't respond in fear. Though the earth be removed, this means really to be altered. It's going to be altered by all the things that are occurring with all the volcanoes and earthquakes and all the different things that are going to happen. 
Though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, tremendous upheaval is going to occur. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with a swelling thereof, it's going to be a shaking like there's never been on this earth. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. That river is in this glorious end time church that has come to the place of seeing that the streams of living water are going to be in them, are going to flow out of them to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. She's not going to be overthrown or moved because she's going to walk in the ways of the Lord. God shall help her, and that right early. And then we saw that the heathen, they are going to be raging. The kingdoms were moved. They're all going to be destroyed and brought down, overthrown. He uttered his voice and the earth melted as the fire and the different judgments are going to be poured out. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And he says, come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. It's going to happen. The desolations are going to come, but those who are walking in the way of the Lord are going to be protected. And because we know this, that's why we will not fear. And we also saw one other passage of Scripture we've looked at each time that shows us these things that are going to happen that will bring great fear on those who are not prepared. Luke 21, verse 11. Great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, famines, pestilences. These are the judgments that are being poured out. And fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. There will be fearful sights that will be occurring doesn't describe what all they'll be, but they will be striking terror, as it says, fear or fright in people that are not prepared. We need, of course, we're going to be prepared because we understand what is going to be happening. And then we see, because of that fear, what it's going to do to people that are not prepared. Men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Everything is going to be shaken. Tremendous shaking is going to occur. We must walk free from fear so we do not have any fear operating in our life. And we have talked about many things about how fear can come into you. We've talked about how we should be dealing with any kind of fears and what's going to be important for us to be able to overcome all fears that would try to come against us. And we're going to continue on this subject here tonight. Isaiah, chapter 43. In Isaiah, chapter 43, when we see these judgments coming and we see the things that the enemy is trying to do, we should not be having any fear. Isaiah 43, verse 1, Now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. The reason we should not fear is because of what he's done. He's redeemed us, which means we're a purchased possession. You're not your own. You're, as he says, thou art mine. We belong to him. Well, if we belong to him, he's going to protect us. He's going to provide for us. He's going to keep us and guard us. He's the one who's going to bring us through whatever situation comes. There will be a remnant, a few, who will walk in the ways of the Lord and be protected, remember, the ones who are the righteous. When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Anything that the enemy might try to do to you or any the situation you might be in, God will bring you through as you are walking in the ways of the Lord. We should not be afraid of anything. Another scripture which we looked at before, but we need to look at it again, that's important. We must understand what Jesus has done for us and how we will be able to walk free from any of the effects of the enemy. Luke 1, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, which is what God will do, might serve him without fear, you can't have fear or your hedge is down, your place will be given to the devil. 
No, we're going to serve him without fear, but it's got to be according to his ways, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. In other words, it's got to be your lifestyle. You can't just suddenly turn on a dime and think I'm going to be suddenly holy and righteous. No. It's the fruits of righteousness that produces holiness anyway. And fruits come because of the seed that's sown and grows up and produces the fruit over time as you're hearing and doing the word. Therefore, if you're going to be protected, you're going to be delivered out of the hand of any enemies that come against you, you are going to serve him, but you can't have any fear. And the reason you'll be able to serve him effectively and be protected is because you're walking in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life. That is mandatory as you were coming like him. One other scripture that we looked at that's important is how are you going to get to the place of not having fear? It's not because you're going to be able to deal with it in the natural or in the flesh or according to your willpower or your, or, you know, your own ability. It's because of the work of God in you. Notice, Isaiah 54, 14, in righteousness you shall be established. When the word is in you, it will produce the fruits of righteousness. And righteousness and peace go together in many scriptures. You'll have peace because you uh, have the word of God established in you as the fruits of righteousness. And what's going to happen? You'll be far from oppression. You shall not fear. And from terror, it shall not come near you because you're going to be established in righteousness. That means being righteous is absolutely essential for you to come to the place of having peace, being far from oppression, not fearing, not having any terror. It's not going to come near you. You are going to walk in the ways of victory. And this is also where you're coming to the place of really, truly loving God. Remember, if you love God, you keep His commandments. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. If you truly love him, you will keep his commandments. If you don't, then that means you really don't love him. And look what he says here. He says, there's no fear in love. Perfect love, perfected love, casteth out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. As you come to the place of perfection in loving God and loving one another and walking in that way at all times, it will eliminate all fear. You won't have any response contrary to the Word. You'll always be walking according to the Word and the sayings of Jesus. Perfected love will eliminate fear. It casts out fear and you won't have the torment because the effects of fear is it will have torment. You can't have this torment going on in your life. And this really is a word which means punishment. Otherwise, the penalties are going to come if you're in fear. No, we're, we're not going to have that because we're going to be walking in the way of righteousness. We're going to be walking in the way of the Word. We're going to be keeping His commandments and keeping His sayings and have gone on to perfection where, where we're following the way of the Lord at all times in our life. We see another scripture. You're going to take hold of the promises you're going to see God accomplish His work in your life. Mark chapter 5, verse 35. Here is where the report came about Jairus' daughter that she was dead. Verse 35. While he spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter's dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Give up. Well, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. That means any negative reports, you're going to believe God. You're not going to be afraid. Any things that would try to come against you, you're not going to be afraid. You're going to believe God's word. God's going to bring you out of it. He's going to deliver you from whatever attacks might come. There'll be the works of God being done, just like in the early church. And that includes raising from the dead. God wants to bring forth mighty works which He will do in this end time church that's going to be in one accord and have one mind. It's going to walk uprightly before the Lord and see God manifest Himself greatly. You're going to operate in faith. You're going to be a real true believer 
and not have any fear whatsoever and take hold of the promises of God that God has for you. At the same time, the enemies will be trying to come against you. We see over in Psalms, chapter 31, verse 13. For I have heard the slander of many. Now, these are ones that speak against you. They'll speak against you, against the the things that you're walking in, things that you're doing, things that you're saying. They'll speak against the way of righteousness. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. Oh, they were on the attack. Anybody who's going to try to bring any kind of slander against you or taking counsel against you or devising to kill you or take away your life, well, fear is going to be operating against you. You've got to be ready to resist all fear that will come against you. Do not give place to it. You're going to trust the Lord to deliver you from any attacks, anything purposed to bring destruction against you. He says, but I trusted in thee, O Lord, and said, thou art my God. You're going to trust in him. He's going to deliver you from the, th the things that people purpose to do evil or speak against you. In fact, this is, of course, if you're walking in line with the Word, He will protect you. That brings us to Psalms 118. If you are walking right with the Lord, then God's for you. You know, if God be for you, who could be against you? And if God's for you, God's on your side. Psalms 118, verse 6. The Lord is on my side. Only if you're righteous and holy, remember. And then He says, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? You're not going to be afraid. God's going to deliver you, protect you, bring you through. If the Lord's on your side, the battle's the Lord's, the victory's ours, you're going to put them in operation. You're going to speak and take all of His promises. You're going to pray for the angels to come on the scene. Remember to protect you and guard you and deliver you from any of the evil that's purposed against you. They'll camp around about you, remember, and deliver you. Remember that scripture over in Psalms 34. Psalms 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him, those that meet the conditions, remember, walking in the fear of the Lord, and delivereth them. They'll deliver you. They'll camp round about you. doesn't matter what the enemy purposes. The angels of God will be there to deliver you from anything that would come against you. And what will God do in the situation? He's going to come on the scene to deliver you from the situation. Isaiah, that is, Isaiah chapter 35, verse 3. Strengthen the weak hands, confirm the feeble knees, Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. The attacks, the enemy's purpose, evil against you. You've got to be strong, and you've got to have no fear. Otherwise, the hedge is down, remember, and the door's open for the enemy. You're going to know what God's going to do. You're going to put him in operation because God will come with a vengeance. As you put him in operation, he'll take vengeance against your enemies with a recompense. And he will come to save you and bring you out of it. You've got to have that confidence in him. But you also got to meet the conditions to be strong. And to have no fear knowing that God will come in vengeance because you're going to speak forth and release him to bring that. God will bring the vengeance against the enemies that would be purposed against you to do evil things at you. And that's important for you to realize. An uh, example of this also is over in uh, 2 Kings. The enemy's purposed to do evil. 2 Kings 6, we see in verse 15. We back up. Here's where the king... He was after the prophet who was knowing what he was doing. And he, they said, where's he at? And he said he's in Dothan, so he decides he's going to send his army against him. 
one of his servants said, had said, told him that there's a prophet in Israel telling the king of Israel the words that he speaks in his bedchamber. And he, so he says, well, go and, and you're going to get him. And he told him where he's at. So they sent their horses, chariots, great hosts, came by night, compassed the city about. Here's the attack coming. The servant, when the servant of the man of God was risen early, gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both of horses and chariots. Here's all the enemies surrounding him. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my mother, what shall, master, what shall we do? Well, he had already put him in operation, the angels of God. He answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Well, who was with them? It was only the two of them in the natural. It was what was there in the spirit, the angels. Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Those are all the angels. And remember, God's going to come with a vengeance. So, how's he going to release that vengeance? It's going to be through you speaking the word, having put the angels in operation. That wasn't all. There where they were there ready to go forth and accomplish what God's vengeance would be against these enemies. What did Elisha do? When they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. You're going to speak, command the work of his hands. Just like what Paul did. He said, you're going to be blind for a season because of the evils that he had done. Smiting them. God, of course, smote them with a blindness according to the word of Elisha. And... That was the end for them. God will deliver them. Because you have authority. God will come with a vengeance to save you, to deliver you. You've got to have confidence in Him and put Him in operation. You need to be working your faith and your authority to have Him put in operation now. So you're seeing Him do great things now, knowing that He will do great things later as well. So important. We also see over in Isaiah chapter 41. Whatever the situation is, you've got to have a total trust and dependence on him. Isaiah 41 verse 10, he said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Again, remember, he's only with the ones who are walking right. Be not dismayed, don't be moved by these things, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God's the one who will accomplish this through the word of God in you. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. May it strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing, as a thing of naught. God's going to take care of them, see. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob and the men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The one who had come and accomplished that redeeming work, remember, to bring you freedom and liberty and manifest it to deliver you from all enemies that would come against you. you got to know what God will do and put them in operation. Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. You cannot have fear. If you have fear, you give place to the enemy, the hedge is down, he's going to be able to come in. Exodus 20, verse 20, Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. We shouldn't have a wrong fear of God. We're supposed to have a right fear of God which would have us to turn away from all sin and all evil. This would be a wrong fear of God, having a fear of Him. But you've got to realize, everything God's working in your life, don't back off, don't be afraid of what He's doing. He's coming to do a good work. He's coming to prove you, to test you, to try you. And His fear may be before your faces, so you don't sin. He wants to bring you to the place of coming out of all sin, deal with all areas in your life, get strong, walk in the ways of the Lord, correct everything, so that there'll be no open doors for the enemy. So don't ever resist God's workings in your life. Fear not, 
God is coming. He is going to come to test and prove. He's going to come and find out what, you know, get you on, on the right track and find out who's going to walk in the way of the Lord and who is not. We must let him have his way to accomplish his work. And also, you can't be afraid of the face of man. We already talked about the fear of man brings a snare. Deuteronomy 1.17, you shall not respect persons in judgment. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of man. This is where they were going to be judging the people according to the word of God. But the key here we want to see is you can't be afraid of the fear of man, uh, of the face of man. The judgment's God's, the cause that is too hard for you, bring it into me and I'll hear it. Don't be afraid of the face of man. You're just going to speak the word. You're going to do what God says. You're going to proclaim what he says to do. And he's going to perform his word. Don't be moved by the people and what they are doing. At the same time, you've got to know enemies, again, that come against you, you've got to get such confidence that he will deliver you. Deuteronomy 129, he said unto you, Dread not, or don't be terrified of them. Don't be trembling, terrified, or dreading against the enemies. Neither be afraid of them whatsoever. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you, according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. God will fight for you to deliver you. It doesn't matter what the situation is. If he's got won victories for you in the past, he'll bring, more, he'll bring victories for you in the future as you put him in operation. But you can't be afraid whatsoever. We come to Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. Remember, there's going to be false prophets that are going to be raised up speaking false things. Anything that they would speak that's contrary to the word, don't be moved by it. Don't be afraid of what they speak. Verse 22, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, this is, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Just because someone says there's some prophet or something and speaks things contrary, don't be moved by it. Don't let words from so-called people that think they're in certain positions that are speaking things wrong, that are false, whether false teachers, false prophets, whatever it might be, false brethren, false apostles, don't be moved by them. You cannot be afraid of them. You just get your eyes on the Lord and on the Word of God and do what He wants you to do. Because the false, remember, the false prophets are going to arise. There are going to be many false prophets, and they're going to deceive many, as it talks about. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, as long as you're meeting the conditions, of course, remember, of walking in line with the word. That's what you need to be doing. And of course, Moses called to Joshua, said to him in the sight of all the people, Be strong and of a good courage. You must go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, it is he that doth go before thee. God will go before thee, remember, to bring you and lead you into the place he has for you. He will be with you. He will not fail thee. He will not forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed or be demoralized or shattered or broken or in any way regardless of what's going on or any kind of attacks that might be coming against you. Notice, God's going before you. He'll go before you and prepare the way. If you have prayed and put him in operation, he'll be with you. He's not going to fail you or forsake you if you meet the conditions. God will be there. Remember, you're purchased possession. You belong to him. You're, remember, he said, thou art mine. He's going to take care of those that are truly his. But remember, those are the only ones that are his are the ones that are following his ways. Again, we see more about not being afraid of the enemy over in uh, 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. This is talking about with Jehoshaphat. When the enemies came against him, he, saw, he did the right thing. He sought the Lord. The multitude was coming against him. He, they gathered themselves together and they began to seek after the Lord and do what they were supposed to do because he set himself to seek the Lord, had the fear of God before him. And so they heard from what the Lord wanted them to do and it comes down to verse 15. 
He said, Hearken ye all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of the great multitude. Remember, we already saw the scriptures about ten thousands of people, or whether they're people or whether they're demons or what, are going to be arrayed ra against you. The great multitude, the battle is not yours, but God's. Remember, you can't deliver yourself. It's God's the one who does it. In fact, God's doing all the work in you. You're only just simply putting him in operation by obeying his word. Don't think for a minute it's you accomplishing it. You're just obedient to the word, doing what he says. God is the one who's accomplishing all things that he does in your life through the word of God that you are carrying out. He said, tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. You'll find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel. He gave them all these words of knowledge and wisdom. You shall not fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. You cannot do that, otherwise you will stop your protection. Fear, remember, brings the hedge down. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. You also get confidence in the Lord, who is going to fight your battles and going to conquer all of your enemies, and he will. We also see in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, here in verse 7, he said, Be strong and courageous, be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitudes is with him. Here's another time where they're coming against him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us. And of course, if God's with you, then the angels are going to go forth to carry things out. They, he's, the, they're the, they're, he's the Lord of hosts, and the host is the army of the Lord, which is all of those angels. And to fight our battles. People rested themselves on the word of Hezekiah then. You need to have yourself rested on the word. You know God's going to help you. You know he's going to fight the battles. You know he's going to be with you. You know you're not going to be moved by anything that the enemy does. You're going to rely on the Lord, and he is going to deliver you and bring you out of it. Same time, the enemy will constantly try to get you in fear. In Nehemiah, this happened continually. Here's one of the cases in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. I looked and rose up and said to the nobles, to the rulers, the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, wives, and your houses. They were trying to bring them into fear all the time and try to get them to stop the work and hinder things. <coughs> and so the, the enemies then, they, they, didn't fall. they didn't fall for the enemy's lies came to pass, the enemies heard it was known unto us. God had brought their counsel to naught, trying to get them all in fear. We returned all of us to the wall and everyone to his work because they got in fear and quit the work working, which is a mistake. They were to continue to do that work. And of course, they had to do things the right way. They were started to build the walls and they had to have every one of his hands rot in the work and the other hand on a weapon because you got to stay in warfare while you're doing the work. They'll be ready to conquer all enemies because they'll be ready to try to come against you. And they got in line with what they needed to do. We come to chapter 6. Here they finally built the wall. There was no breach left within, which means no gap, which means there'd be no areas of sin. The breach was eliminated. So, of course, here's the enemies, Sanballat and Geshem. They're going to keep trying to come at you and trying to get to you and trying to do some kind of destructive thing. We come down to verse 9, where again it says what they all were doing. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. They kept working to try to bring some way to get them in fear, out of faith, not doing the word, shut down the work. And, of course, they, of course, overcame, though, they came together and rose up, and uh, it says here, they perceived that God had not sent them. They finally got wisdom. Instead of listening to the, the voice that was trying to bring fear and shut down the work being done, and he pronounced the prophecy against me for Dubai and Tabalat. Senbalat had hired him. This is an evil person that came from someone stirred up by the devil. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid. 
They wanted to bring you any way to get you out of the word. Do so in sin, and that they might have a matter of an evil report, they might reproach me. That's what the devil wants. He wants to get you in fear. He wants to get you in sin. He wants you to get off the ways of the word so you'll, you won't be walking in the ways of the Lord. In fact, you'll be even bringing a, have an evil report and a reproach. Again, he says the same thing. My God, think thou that these guys, according to their works and their prophetess and the rest of the prophets, that they would have put me in fear. Now, well, they overcame that, though, and they saw the work be accomplished. So the work wall was finished in the 25th day of the month, Elul, which is the month of repentance, in 52 days. They come to repentance. They got things in order, and they did not fall for those the fear tactics, even though at times they did, but they always got back on track. You see, fear is going to be the opposite of faith. And if you're going to walk in line with the Word, you're going to be operating in faith and being a doer of the Word. If you're not, why not? Some way or another, you've been deceived or you've gotten in fear and drawn back from it in some capacity. The devil will try to work through that. God wants you to come to the place of not letting any fear get a hold of you in your life. In fact, we even see over in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 25. This is what he wants to bring forth. He says, I'll make with them a covenant of peace. They'll cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. They shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I'll make them in the places round about my hill a blessing. It'll cause the shower to come down in a season. There'll be showers of blessing. That's what God wants. It's going to happen when you're walking in faith and obedience to the word. And you're going to be bringing forth fruit. The trees of the field shall yield their fruit. The earth shall yield their increase. They'll be safe in their land. They'll know that I am the Lord when I've broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. Again, you're going to have to fight and be in warfare. For God will deliver you, but you've got to put them in operation. And you've got to be doing the word to bring forth fruit. And bringing forth fruit is what's important for you, but by hearing and doing the word, so you come to the place of having spiritual strength and being able to overcome. He goes on and says, They shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beasts of the land devour them. They shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. Again, you have to conquer all fear. You're not going to be afraid of anything that is occurring. Whether you see them, the judgments that God's pouring out, or from the works of the enemy trying to come against you, trying to deceive you and get you to turn away from the way of the word. And so he said, I'll raise them up for a plan of renown. They'll be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. Thus they shall know that I, the Lord, am, am their God, uh, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people. God will be with those who walk in his ways, and those are his true people the ones who hearken diligently unto his voice. Also, the ones who are going to be the remnant, they're the ones who are going to walk in the word of God. They're not going to be, they're going to have conquered all areas of sin in their life. Zephaniah 3, verse 13. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. No, they're not going to walk in sin. They're not going to speak lies. They're not going to have a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. They're going to feed and lie down and feed on the Word of God. None shall make them afraid, because you're going to keep your eyes on the Word. He talks about being glad and rejoicing in the Lord. And then he talks about how the Lord takes away your judgments. This is the song we sang tonight, and we sing it all the time. It's from here. The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. How? He has cast out thine enemy. How are you going to get rid of the judgments that have come in your life, and why have they come? Because of sin. From inheritance? from your own sins, from victimization. That's where you have to cast out all the spirits. Remember, the number one negative influence in your life is the inheritance line. You have to cast out all the spirits come in from inheritance, your own sins, and victimization. Casting out the enemy, and how does this happen? Because the king of Israel, even the Lord's in the midst of thee, he's doing the work as you put the authority in operation. And notice the great promise when you do it. Thou shalt not see evil any more. It's tremendous what God will do. That means you're going to come to the place of being peaceful, blessing, protected. Nothing's going to come nigh, safe, secure, no evil happening anymore. That's what he'll do. 
And so he says, in that day to Jerusalem, fear not, to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee. It means he's got to come on the midst of you. And how does he come on the midst of you to manifest himself mightily? It's through the word in you. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing because of God manifesting himself. You made him your habitation, remember. You are to make him your habitation so he can manifest himself greatly in the last days and he will ready to do it. At the same time, when the attacks come against you, you can't be reacting in fear or getting upset. Look what it says in 1 Peter 3, 14. But if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you or blessed are you. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Don't get reacting of what the, they're doing. Don't be afraid of the terror or being troubled whatsoever. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready to give an answer to every man. I ask you the reason, the hope that's in you with meekness and fear, the fear of the Lord. Because you're just going to keep holding fast to the word, speak the word, and do what's right. But you're going to be ready to suffer for righteousness' sake. And you're not going to respond in the flesh about things. You understand you're going to be, you're going to be blessed by the Lord. You're not going to be afraid of what people might be bringing against you whatsoever. You've got to realize that God will bring you through every attack. If your eyes are on Him, you speak His word, you do what He says, you're using your authority, you're not giving place to anything, no, you don't have the hedge down, you've got the hedge built, you've got on to perfection, your house is built, the work's finished. That's what's to happen. Deuteronomy 3, 2, The Lord said to me, Fear him not, for I'll deliver him, all his people, and his land, again, into the hand. Thou shalt do unto him as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. This is talking about how he got delivered him from Og. Og was the other one before. And now he's talking about he's going to deliver you from Sihon. Anyway, one enemy falls, the next enemy will fall. He'll deliver you out of all attacks. doesn't matter how many come against you. God is going to fight for you when you put them in operation. Down in verse 22, you shall not fear them. Again, you get in fear of what the enemy is doing, you're going to be in trouble. The open door will be there. The enemy will have entrance to get to you. For the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. If you've got your eyes on the Lord and you're putting him in operation, he will fight the fight. He will give you the victory. The only reason you'd get in fear because you don't have confidence that he's going to bring victory for you. And you aren't putting him in operation or some reason or other, you're giving place to what the enemy's doing. You've got to keep your eyes on the Lord and know exactly what he will do for you. Chapter 11, verse 25. There shall no man be able to stand before you. Well, it's a type of the man there, it's a type of the evil spirits. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that you shall tread upon as he has said unto you. Well, you're going you're gonna to possess the land. You're going to go forth preaching the gospel. And wherever you're, you are, you're going to be protected. The angels will be camping around about you as you put them in operation. And the enemies will be afraid of you and have dread of you. They will not be able to stand before you as you walk in the ways of the Lord and do the things that he says. But you've got to get on board and do what he tells you to do. You've got to get firmly established as well. Those who are not firmly established, if you're kind of wavering, you're kind of not strong, you're not going to be able to stand. The devil will try everything he can to get to you. That's why it said, be strong and do the word, remember, and not have any fear against all the things that are coming. Job 11, verse 15. He says, Then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot, yea, thou shalt be steadfast, and thou shalt not fear. He wants you to not have any spots, no blemishes. You're going to be steadfast on the things of God, firm, and you're not going to fear. Get rid of all the sin, be steadfast in the soulless realm. Remember, that's the steadfastness of your soul. Talks about in Luke about that. And you also, you're not going to fear. You're not going to give place to the enemies. At the same time, the enemy again, Psalms 56, we see the picture of the things that he'll try to do. 
Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresses me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for there be many that fight against me. That's right. There'll be a lot. It doesn't matter. You can resist them. You can conquer them. You can overcome them. You can be protected from all the attacks that would come against you. What time I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. When fear tries to come at you, you're going to get your eyes on the Lord. You're going to be confident and trusting in Him. In God, I'll praise His word. In God, I'll put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. No fear. You must conquer fear. Remember, fear is sin. That's why it says continually, fear not. They're going to try to get to you in all ways to get you to give place to them. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They'll bring evil thoughts against you for these evil spirits. They'll try to get to your words. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps. They wait for my soul because that's where the battleground is. And you must be ready to guard yourself and not give place to any of the attacks coming against you. Shall they escape by iniquity and mine anger? Cast down the people, O God. He'll cast down all those enemies. And he is, here he's crying over the things. Well, you don't want to be crying over the things. You're going to be resisting the enemy. When I cry unto you, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. You've got to know that God's for you. But again, you can't just assume he's for you. You know he's for you because you've met the conditions. You're walking right. You're in holiness. You're obedient. You're doing what he says. You're, you've conquered all sin. You've built your spiritual house. You're walking <clears throat> upright before him. But you've got to know it and have confidence. And you know God's for you. You know you're going to be on the, he's going to come on the scene. Remember, if God be for me, who can be against me? Romans chapter 8 speaks of that. And God will I praise his word, and the Lord will I praise his word. And God, if I put my trust, I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Again, it keeps emphasizing no fear and trusting in the Lord and knowing what God will do to bring you out of everything that would come against you. Here's a case over in Isaiah where the enemies were arrayed against them. Isaiah chapter 7. Here's where the, they're warring against came and went up towards Jerusalem to war against it, couldn't prevail against it. And Syria was confederate with Ephraim. The heart was moved. The art of the people, the trees of the wood were moved with the wind, it talks about. And now they're going to go out to meet Ahaz, and he's going to meet him at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fooler's field. Ah, What's the fooler's field? That's the place where you get washed. You get the work of the fooler. That means you've got to get to that place to get totally clean and washed so you will be able to triumph over any enemies. He said to him, Take heed, be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted. For the two tails of these smoking vibrants, for the fierce anger of Rezin of Assyria and of the son of Romalia, because of all these things, have taken evil accounts against thee, even though that's what they want to pursue and bring up. They said, let us go up against Judah. They wanted to bring destruction. They want to make a breach. They want to set a king in the midst of it. They want to take over. He said, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Why is it going to not stand or why is it not going to come to pass? Because they went to the fooler's field. They obeyed God. They got themselves clean and holy and trusted in the Lord. And God says, it's not going to happen. God will come on the scene and stop the works of the enemy and their plots, their plans, anything, their purposes. He will deliver you from them. These things will not come to pass if you do the things that he tells you to do. Very important. At the same time, again, we see it again about no fear over in the New Testament in Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, we come over to verse 26. Fear them not therefore, for there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear that preach upon the housetops, you don't hold anything back. You keep speaking the truth, regardless of what others say or do or receive or don't receive. Fear them not. Fear not them which kill the body and are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. 
That's quite a statement. The ones who don't follow the way of the Lord and rebel against Him are going to be destroyed in hell. But those who are going to walk with the Lord, they're, they're, going, to, they're going to be fine. And these ones that would come against you, yeah, they might even be able to kill the body on some, but they aren't able to kill the soul. You've got to have the fear of God before you. You're going to walk in the ways of the Lord, and regardless of what might happen, He will bring you through. But you've got to have no fear of any of those ones that are coming against you. You've got to obey God and do the things that He tells you to do and carry out uh, the ministry of the Lord. You're going to speak the Word. You're going to preach the Gospel. It doesn't matter what anybody says or whatever. You are a representative of Jesus Christ, and you're going to carry out that ministry. You've got to be a good and faithful servant to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord, or have a ruler over these cities or whatever. We've got to be faithful. Luke 12, verse 32, he said, Fear not, little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Well, that means that you and I have the rule and the reign of God. And if we have the rule and reign of God, we can put the rule and reign of God in operation because you have authority. Kings have authority, and you're to use your authority. You're going to bind. You're going to lose. You're going to resist. You're going to speak to mountains. You're going to speak against everything that the enemy comes at. You're going to declare no weapon formed against you. Prosper. They'll prosper. You're going to damn every tongue that rises against you. Whatever the enemy brings at you, you're going to conquer it, speak against it, resist it, See God come on the scene and deliver you from any and all attacks that would come against you because He's given you the kingdom. You are in the kingdom. You've been delivered out of the authority of darkness. You're translated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You're a king and you are to operate as a king, ruling and reigning, using your authority to conquer. Remember, your authority does not go away during the tribulation time. You are still a king. You're a royal priest and you've got to rise up and rule and reign over everything. And again, speaking the Word of God and not backing off. Philippians 1.14 He said, Many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, even though he got taken in bonds, are much more bold to speak the Word without fear. Well, they weren't going to be moved by that and back off because of that. They actually did the opposite of what maybe you'd think. They got bold, more bold to speak the Word without fear. They're going to go forth and speak it forth. Even though he had his bonds and all these things were coming against him, they would you know, come try to imprison him. You're going to go forth and you're going to speak the things that God wants you to speak. You cannot be afraid. We see it again. It's over and over and over. We've given you these scriptures. So you're established in the fact that you cannot be afraid of what man will do. Hebrews 13, 6, we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. God is your helper in every situation. You're going to trust in Him. He will deliver you. He will bring you out of anything and everything that would attack you. At the same time, there will be some that will be martyred, we know. We see in Revelation chapter 2, he says in verse 10, to this church, he said, Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. You never be afraid of the attacks of the enemy. Eyes on the Lord at all times. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, I'll give thee the crown of life. The big picture is where you end up with. And you cannot be in fear. You've got to be faithful. Remember, it's the good and faithful servant that is going to enter in. You've got to be faithful. The ones that aren't faithful, they're through. Remember what it talks about? Revelation 21. We talked about that the other day. This is not talking about the fearful. This is talking about the cowardly. We showed you this. For you who weren't here, we'll show you this. This is the word delos. Must not have copied. There we go. 
And you'll see that this means. Well, why they translated it that way, I, I don't know, but they did. Whoop. Shouldn't be two of them. Well, let's see if it comes out. No. Let's try it again. Here it is. It says timid and fearful here, but really the word means cowardly. It means fear in a shameful way of being a coward, as it says here in the latter part. In the UBS, it means cowardly. Fear because you're a coward. Laonida brings it out as well, pertaining to be cowardly. So this isn't talking about someone just has fear. This is someone who is a coward. They've drawn back from doing the things that God wants them to do. And then the second part, it's not really talking about the unbelieving because this is the word apostos. Pastos means faithful. A pastos means without not being faithful. So it'd be the unfaithful ones. If you're not faithful, you're going to end up in the lake of fire or the fire and the brimstone. If you're cowardly, you're going to, you can't be a coward and serve the Lord. You can't be unfaithful and think that you're going to be saved. It's not going to happen. You've got to follow the way of the Lord, be obedient unto Him in all things. So we cannot allow ourselves whatsoever to have any kind of unfaithfulness. That's why he told them back there in Revelation chapter 2, again, if we go back to that in verse 10, be faithful unto death. You're going to be faithful against anything and everything that would come against, against you. You're going to, and you're not about to turn away. And then he says, we'll give you the crown, the Stephanos of life. That's the victor's crown because you have held fast and you have done what is right. You got to guard yourself. You got to guard your heart. John 14, verse 27. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled. And then it says, watch this, neither let it be the word delio, not afraid, let it be cowardly. This is that word for cowardly. That means you can have the cowardness is in the heart, isn't it? It's an attitude of heart you've let come into you. Don't let your heart get troubled and don't let your heart be cowardly. Otherwise, because that's going to be your motivation of why you do what you do. So God brings you his peace. You're going to keep your eyes on him. You'll stay in peace. You're not going to let anything come into your heart. You've got to guard your heart, remember, with all diligence and keep the word in your heart. We're not going to be troubled. We're not going to be cowardly whatsoever. We're going to do the things that God says for us to do. We're going to walk in his ways. Remember, he talks about that uh, uh, back, back in verse Let not your heart, in verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Because you're going you're to keep eyes on the Lord. You're going to keep believing the Word of God. You're going to keep believing in Jesus. You're not about to turn away in any way. You're not going to be, you've got to guard your heart and make sure that you're walking in the ways of the Lord at all times in your life. We go over to Isaiah chapter 33 and we see something. Fear has to be eliminated. Fear in your heart will have an adverse effect. It will cause you to draw back from the things of God. Isaiah 33, verse 14, The sinners in Zion are afraid. Oh, that's no good. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. That's the way they're going to be. Hypocrites will be fearful because they're not right with God. They, won't, they, they aren't going to be able to handle the situations that are coming. Only the ones who are holy and righteous and eyes on the Lord and walk in His ways, faithful, obedient, are going to be able to come through. You aren't going to be able to handle it unless it's going to be a supernatural power of God and the working of God that's going to enable you to handle things. Walking in sin, sinful ones, they're going to be afraid. They're not going to be able to stand in what's coming. The hypocrites, fearfulness is going to take hold of them. 
Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? These are when the judgments are coming. Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burnings? <laughs> well, they're not going to make it. If there are going to be hypocrites or sinners, but who is going to make it? He that walks righteously, you're going to have the walk. Consistent. Speaketh uprightly, you speak the right words. He that despises the gain of oppressions, of extortion, you're against all kinds of evil and sin, that shakes his hands from holding a bribe, otherwise he wouldn't fall into any being paid off and take bribes. He stops his ears from hearing of blood. He shuts his eyes from seeing evil. He's guarding all his members from anything that's not of God. You've got to guard yourself. All your members are to be presented, remember, unto God. You're commanded to, let, to yield your members unto God in Romans 6. He shall dwell on high. The guy who meets these conditions, the way he's walking righteous, he's well, well, has uprightly, he's got uprightness of heart, he's not yielding to any of these evils. Notice, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions or the stronghold of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. That means all the provisions will be given to him. You'll, you'll have provision. Why? Because you'll be defended. Because you've met the conditions. What's going to happen, though, the guys that are walking in sin? <laughs> they're going to be taken down. They're going to have fear. They're, they're, their hedge is going to be down because the, the door's open. And all the hypocrites, they weren't going to be able to get away with it. All these people are going down. And only the ones that are right are going to be able to stand in the midst of all the judgments that are going to be coming. It's going to be quite a day. And then it says, after that, he'll provide for you. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that's very far off. Ah, that's the land far off we're going to end up going. Where are we going to be going to? We're going to be going to heaven when we're caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And we're going to be in the marriage with him, praise God. We're going to see the king in his beauty. We're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and be with him. Behold, that place where we're going to be with him. God wants you to get your eyes on him, doing what he says. All sins got to be taken out. You can't be hypocritical. Any of those hypocrites, say one thing and do another. They're going to be going down for sure. Look over at 2 Corinthians. They had all kinds of attacks. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. Hmm, they, they, they went through it. But we were troubled on every side. <laughs> all kinds of oppressed, all were coming against them. Distress and pressure coming against them. Without were fightings, all kinds of attacks coming. Within were fears. They had the battle fears that were trying to rise up against them. You've got to be ready. You're going to cast all, replace those things all with the Word of God. And you're going to come against all the attacks that would come against you, anything that would fight against you, the battles. And you're going to put God in operation. Remember, the battle's the Lord's and the victory is yours. You're going to be speaking the word, speaking in the name of Jesus, resisting the enemies, using your authority, taking hold of promises, taking hold of his mercy, putting him in operation, praying accurately and effectively, being strong and not keep, having your heart guarded, your soul steadfast, as we've already seen, walking in the ways of the Lord. All those things are to happen. And we're not going to compromise anything. The devil will try to get people to compromise and they'll go down. They'll get wiped out. We saw it in Revelation, the ones who compromise. They're going to, these ones who compromise are going to be cast in the great tribulation. The ones that were compromised in ways and weren't walking in the ways of the Lord, that he was going to come and fight against them with the sword of his mouth and, and they're going to take away his candlestick. The ones that didn't repent and get right. That's what's going to happen. This is talking about Moses. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, the threats of the enemy. The threats of the Antichrist will be coming against anybody. He'll speak against anybody that's walking in the way of righteousness. For he endured 
as seeing him who's invisible. His, who's his eyes upon? Not on the king, not on the evil one. He's aware of what he's doing. His eyes are on the thing, one who's invisible. Your eyes are going to be on the Lord. Your eyes are going to be on the Word. You're going to be eyes on Him. And you're going to endure. You're going to be steadfast. Remember, this is going to be a time of you enduring and being steadfast because of all the things that are going to be occurring. You're going to be walking with the Lord. And God is going to bring you out and deliver you from all these different attacks. Now, you can't yield to fear because fear will take you down. All the results of fear, we've already seen these scriptures in the past, but in Genesis 3, what did fear ca cause to happen in Genesis 3 and verse 10? What happened? What did, what did Adam do? I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. He wasn't clothed anymore. It'll cause you to be afraid and hide yourself. He hid himself. Well, you, that's not going to get you anywhere. You're going to have to follow, get right with the Lord and follow him and have your eyes upon him. Also, you've got to watch that you don't lie in any way. Genesis 18.15, this is where Sarah denied Remember when he said, uh, you're going you're gonna to have a child at the t according to the time of life? Well, she didn't believe it at first. She laughed. If we go back, the Lord said to Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I have a surety bear a child when I'm old? She was in doubt. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I'll return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And then instead of admitting that she laughed and she was, you know, for, she denied it. She lied. Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not. Why? Because she was afraid. See, many people lie because they're afraid. They're afraid to tell the truth and be found out for what they've done. Now, you've got to speak the truth. You can't be trying to cover over the truth or it makes you a liar. That's what she was doing. And she said, no. Nay, but you did laugh. Of course she did. She was lying. Because fear gets a hold of them. A lot of people lie because they have fear. of They don't want to be found out on things. They said, I didn't do that, and yet they did. <laughs> hmm. they got to repent or they're in trouble because liars end up in the lake of fire, remember. If you do let fear get a hold of you, it will bring oppression. You'll be oppressed. This is true. All these things are true now, but it's going to be more so in the days to come. Isaiah 54, verse 14. In righteousness you'll be established, you'll be far from oppression, because you won't fear. But if you're in fear and terror, you will be oppressed. God doesn't want you to be oppressed. He wants you to be at peace. He wants you to be abiding in Him and in steadfast in the soul and having joy and peace and eyes upon the Lord and walking His ways and carrying out the things that God wants you to. In fact, fear will bring bondage. Hebrews chapter 2 talks about how they were in the Old Testament era. In verse 14, when he talked about how Jesus went through death, that He might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Well, they had a fear of death, of course, because they were going to they were going to go to hell. And so they were in bondage continually all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear will bring you in bondage. You can't allow any kind of fear. And remember, you got a brand new spirit. You're not supposed to have any fear or bondage in your life. Hebrews or uh, Romans 8 verse uh, 15 says uh, in verse 15 it is says, you've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's what the, the, they had, because they didn't have a spirit that was right with God. They would be in, in bondage to fear. But you received the spirit of adoption, whereby, whereby, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We shouldn't have any fear because of the new spirit on the inside of you. You need to walk in his ways and keep your eyes on him instead of being moved. If you're walking in the spirit, you won't have fear. If you get in the flesh, you get, your soul's not tuned into the word, You'll get in fear real easy. Also, 
It'll bring you down, it'll bring a snare upon you. The fear of man, remember, will bring a snare. That's why you've got to conquer the fear of man. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Anything that tries to get you to be afraid of man, to not do something, you need to do the opposite, otherwise it's got you in a bondage. You do what God wants you to do. You don't draw back. You put your trust in the Lord, you will be safe, as he said. We also saw earlier that what else does fear do? If you're, if you're not made perfect, your love is not perfected, you'll have torment because of fear. Fear has torment or brings punishment and a penalty. And what's going to be the problem? He that fears, he hasn't been made perfect in love. He hasn't been perfected in love by seeing God accomplish what he purposes to bring him into perfection by walking in the ways of the love of God and walking in love towards man at all times. It's mandatory. We got to walk in his ways. Also, what else is going to happen if you walk in fear? You're going to sink. You'll be sinking for sure, spiritually. Remember what happened with Peter? He's walking on the water. And as soon as he got afraid, when he got moved by what the enemy was doing with the wind being temp temp tempestuous, wind being strong and mighty, he began to sink when he got afraid. You'll begin to sink. You'll be sinking spiritually if you let fear get in you and you'll be in trouble. And of course, the reason for him doing this is because he was in two ways. Doubt is the word distazo, standing in two ways. You can't be. You've got to be single-minded upon the word and eyes on him and not move by anything else coming against you. If you let fear get a hold of you, too, you won't, you, you, you'll be in, have insomnia and not being able to sleep. <laughs> you'll be tormented. The promise of God is he'll give you sweet sleep. Proverbs 3.24, when you lie down, you shall not be afraid. You shall lie down and your sleep shall be sweet. That tells you a root, not one of the roots behind why people sleep is not right, because they got fear. Fear is robbing them of the sweet sleep. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked when it comes. That's why you can't be moved by the desolation, because the desolation is going to come. And the sudden fear will try to rise up, but you got, once you know this is going to happen, you're not going to be afraid of the sudden fear that will present itself when you see this tremendous desolation that's coming against the wicked. It's going to come. That is speaking of what's going to happen in the end times and the destruction that's going to come upon all of these ones. It's going to be quite a time. And you also can't let fear get a hold of you or you're not going to win any battles. Remember what happened in Deuteronomy 20, verse 8. They said, what man there is fearful and faint-hearted? They sent him home. Let him go and return to his house, lest his brother's heart faint as well as his heart. You can't, you aren't going to win any battles whatsoever. All fear and faint-heartedness has to go. Absolutely, these guys were not fit for the battle at all. Same thing we saw happen over in Judges chapter 7 with, with uh, Gideon. When God said there, the ones that were fearful and afraid, let them return, depart from them, and they returned. 22,000 of the, of the 32,000 that showed up, 10,000 remained. That's like two-thirds of the people were all bound by fear. We got to be not of the many. And the many are going to be like that, unfortunately. But the few are the ones who are going to walk, and the few ended up to be the ones who were watching as well, as we saw, because they, they lapped up the water to their mouth instead of stuck their head down in the water. So they were watching spiritually, watching the enemies, anything they would do. There was only 300. That's the few, the many, that are going to come forth. Fear can make you weak. It will make you weak. And you're not going to be able to see the things of God be accomplished. In Nehemiah, we didn't look at all this before, but we'll look at it now in chapter 6, verse 9. It said, They all made us afraid. Their hands shall be weakened from the work that have been not done. And that's what happened. So they came and 
yeah, we did look at this, about how they came and hired this guy to try to come and make him afraid. <laughs> Remember that? And what would it do? It made him spiritually weak, so they couldn't accomplish the thing. But then they overcame that, and then they finished the wall. Fear will make you spiritually work, weak, so the work will not get accomplished. That's what happened back in chapter 4 in... Uh, chapter 4 where the people were they gave place to and stop the work here it was he said be not afraid of them remember the Lord which is great and terrible and fight for your brethren your sons your daughters your wives and your house houses they had they had stopped the work back there the Jew, they, they did not continue on the adversaries say they'll not know neither see till we come in the midst of them and slay them and cause the work to cease and that's what happened for a period of time you got to be ready to resist all fear, fear of the enemy, fear of man, fear of what's happening, fear of the desolations. I mean, it's going to be fearful sights, whatever it happens, fear is going to be reigning throughout this period of time. It's going to be operating. You cannot let fear get a hold of you. We're going to conquer it. We're going to walk in all the ways of the Lord. And we're going to see God bring us through victorious. It's only the ones that walk by faith that are going to come through. Remember when Jesus comes back, he talks about here, Luke chapter 18, verse 8. He's going to avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, when he comes, shall he find faith on the earth. <laughs> Those are the only ones that are going to be to be with him. All the fearful ones are going to be destroyed. They're going to be already wiped out. You got to walk by faith in line with the word, righteous, holy, all the days of your life. No sin, no hypocritical ways, nothing that's contrary to the word, no yielding to the flesh, no reacting to what situation's coming. You're going to maintain eyes on the Lord, not be moved by the situations that come. The fearful sights, all these different things are going to happen. In fact, it'll, again, it'll be so extreme. As we saw, men's hearts will be failing for the fear, for looking on all the things that are coming on the earth. So you got to know, conquering fear is absolutely essential for anybody that's going to make it through the tribulation period. If you don't conquer fear, you'll be brought down mandatory. So, you got means you got to get rid of it now. Correct all the problems of fear in your life. Get the word in you. Cast out all the spirits of fear, and all the different types of ones, all kinds of them. Fear of confrontation, fear of man, fear of rejection, you know, fear of the future, fear of provision, fear of whether I'm going to fear of the famine, fear of the devil, fear of antichrist, fear of whatever it might be. Get yourself established in the Word so you're not moved by any of these things. And you're going to walk by faith. And you're going to stay in peace because righteousness and peace go hand in hand. And you're going to abide in peace. And that is what's going to have to happen. You can't let your heart be troubled. You need to let it be afraid, remember. And that's going to be the key. So you conquer fear, you'll be ready for the things that are coming. And one of the big things is when you have the knowledge of what's coming, you know. So you're, you understand. That's it. It's going to happen. The fearful side, fear will be all over the place. Almost the entire world, the whole entire world will be engulfed in fear. You got to get this picture. This is what the word shows clearly. So you understand what's coming. But you get it under your foot now, then you won't be given place to it. But if you've got all these spirits of fear and you've got all these bondages, you think you're going to be able to rise up and overcome it if you haven't already gotten all this out now? No. Now's the time to work out our own salvation, always obeying, get everything out, get to the place where, again, that's why we've got to become strong and mighty and doers and fruitful and walk in victory. That's what he'll do a great work in your life as you're hearing and doing the Word. That's why these messages are important now. We've got time. 
Don't waste your time. Use your time. Be wise. And don't give place to anything of the enemy ever in your life and conquer all areas of sin. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that declares and, and commands and exhorts us continually to fear not. I understand. Fear breaks the hedge, opens the door for the enemy, is the opposite of faith. Fear will allow the enemies to bring destruction upon you, and it will stop God from working on your behalf. The Lord is on our side when we're walking in holiness and righteousness before Him all the days of our life, walking in obedience, doing what He says. When we walk in that way, the Lord is for us. The Lord is on our side. I will not fear what anybody says, anything goes on in the world, I will not fear. And I understand in those last days when the judgments are being poured out, the fear will be so thick, you can almost cut it with a knife. Fear will be engulfing men throughout the world. But you will not fear. I will not fear. I will have my mind stayed upon the Lord. I will be in perfect peace. I will walk in righteousness and holiness. I will be enduring what is coming forth. I will be preaching the gospel and praying and speaking the word uncompromisingly, declaring the truth to help people to turn towards the Lord. I thank you. I will be engaging in warfare, conquering all enemies, and I will be seeing as I pray the angels come on the scene to protect me. They will camp around about me and deliver me as I walk in the fear of the Lord. And they will have charge over me to keep me in all my ways when I make them my habitation and I follow the way of the word. I thank you. I will not fear. I will stay at peace. I will not let my heart be troubled. I will not have any fear in my heart. I will cast out all the spirits of fear. I will correct every problem in my life. So I'm walking in the word. I'll be far from oppression. I won't fear. I won't have terror. It's not coming near me because I'm going to be established in righteousness. I thank you, Lord. As I walk in your ways, and I come to see the complete work, I will not have any more fear. And even though the fear will be occurring, it's not going to come nigh me. None of the oppression. Because I'm walking in your ways. Eyes upon you. I'll be ready to endure whatever happens. I will suffer for righteousness sake. I'm not going to be, not be moved by what people do. I thank you. I'm walking in your ways, in the ways of righteousness, all the days of my life. And because you're on my side, you will deliver me. You will protect me. You will guard me. You will be for me. You'll go before me and prepare the way. I thank you. You'll fight my battles as I put you in operation by speaking forth your word. Thank you. I will be established in the word of God. I will eliminate all fear and cast out all spirits of fear out of my life. Thank you for accomplishing this great work. So I will be free and I will be ready for the coming days. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Father, I thank you that as we've looked at these scriptures, and it's painted the picture of what's coming, and it's shown very clearly, nobody can have fear and be able to stand in the last days. The fearful are going to be taken down. 
Thank you, Father. We can't be cowards either, or then we're in the lake of fire. We can't be unfaithful. Father, we thank you for everyone getting on the word, hearing and doing the word, and doing business to get rid of everything that's not of God, every fear out of their life, and cast the spirits out, correct every problem. Thank you, Father. We're going to be established in righteousness, and we will see your protection all the days of our life because we're hearers and doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.